I, it's funny you ask about the idea of like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because I was talking to my oldest, who's 14 now, that same little boy who was like knocking on the door asking me if I was okay. Um, I was talking to him about college and I just sort of have all sorts of conversations. I didn't go to college. I have a high school diploma and I'm really proud at, at what I figured out in my life. But I sincerely hope that my kids do just because I want them to have that time and that experience kind of figure themselves out and ask those questions. What do you want to be when you grow up? And so I said, hey, are you still thinking that you might want to go to school somewhere where it's cold? He's 14. So the only thing that he knows is that he doesn't like how hot it is in Texas and he wants to go somewhere where it's cooler. And he's like, I don't really know. You know what? I realized, mom, I got to figure out what it is I want to do before I know where I want to go. And I was like, I disagree, Jackson because there are 40 year olds who don't know where they want to go, what they want to do with their lives. And my life and my, my trajectory has shifted and ebbed and changed so many times over the last 20 years. So I said, I think you would be better off knowing what you're passionate about and really trying to choose a school that you feel like is going to feed your passions and has the sort of energy that you want and kind of, oh, this is what I could see myself doing on the weekend. And these are the kind of people that I want to surround myself with. Because you could at 18 think that you're going to go major in communications and then get there and be like, oh my gosh, actually it's psychology. Actually it's film. Like you don't know who you're going to be. So I would say if anyone's watching this and you're sort of honestly shaming yourself because you think you should have it figured out no not true i mean we were just sitting back you know <laughs> chopping it up reminiscing about the good old days and all that <laughs> okay look i'm not saying that you getting up and taking a shower and doing your hair and your makeup and putting on a cute outfit or whatever your version of that is i'm not saying that that's gonna fix what's going on but it doesn't hurt always said it it's not about the destination. It's all about the journey. Hi, I'm Rachel Hollis. I'm a founder and CEO, and you're watching Behind the Brand with Brian Elliott. Hey, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. I'm here with the incomparable Rachel Hollis. Rachel, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I usually ask my guests, how did you get this job? Wow, how did I get this job? Well, I created this job. That's how I got this job. Um, I actually started, I, I've been an entrepreneur for 17 years and my company has evolved as I have evolved as a person. So I started actually back in LA, I was an event planner and I started blogging. And this was like the very beginning baby days of blogging. I started blogging as a way to market my event planning firm. And over the course of several years, the blog started to gain some traction and get more popular. And I really started to enjoy this online community that I had and creating content and showing up for them in that space. And it kept growing and I kept evolving until it became the media company that I run today. Give us an idea, give us some context, put a time step on that. What, about what time period was that? Um, so I started blogging, I want to say 2007, uh, 2008, and we were joking before we started about 2008 and what a fun year that was to be an entrepreneur. Um, but honestly, in the beginning, I had no idea what I was doing, like most things, right? So I had no idea what it was to have a blog and I would just sort of write about anything and everything and I would take pictures with like a little point and shoot and I didn't understand lighting, they were horrible. I was sort of finding Google images and putting that into my blog, like I didn't know any of the rules. And I honestly, I think I had like three people who read what I was doing, but I just kept at it. I think honestly, if, if there is a narrative in what I do today and kind of why I've had the success that I've had, it's because I just keep at it. I'm not afraid to fail. I'm not afraid to suck. I just keep trying until I figure it out. And that's what blogging was for me. And you know, I'm a, I'm a voracious reader and I was writing every day on my blog and eventually I started to dream about what it would be like to write my own book. 
And just to give you some context, if I started blogging in 2007, my very first book came out 2014. So it was a it was a long journey to build up an audience and get to that place and know what I wanted to talk about and try and push a book out into the world. Um, but I just sort of kept inching forward a little bit at a time and um, eventually wrote a book and thought for sure. Um, I think like a lot of authors, like I thought, oh, the only reason I'm not an author is because I've never actually finished a book. I had started 50 books and never finished one. I thought if I could finish, then certainly, you know, the Pulitzer Committee would call at any moment. And I wrote a book and sent it out to every publisher on earth and everybody turned it down. And I was decimated, truly. Um, I felt like my dream had died. I felt like all this stuff that I had worked for and now it's not gonna come true. And I uh, literally, the very last publisher called, it was a Friday evening, I will never forget, very last um, publisher had declined. And I was really holding out hope for them. And I remember shutting myself in my bathroom and sliding to the floor and having an ugly cry, like like a really awful, like this is not pretty, you know, on the floor. And my son knocked on the door. He was like, mommy, I was like, leave me alone. Like, get out of here. Um, and I, I cried my eyes out and then I sat there for a minute and I thought, you know, you already did the hard thing. You already wrote the words. You have a book. Maybe those people don't like it, but you did a thing, and at the very least, you should see it through all the way. And so I got up off the floor, I went to the kitchen, I poured a glass of wine, and I Googled, how do you self-publish a book? And I self-published the book, had no idea what I was doing. Like, I took the cover, I mean, like, I took the picture for the cover myself, I formatted it in, like, Word, I, I didn't know I should use an editor, there were gra grammatical errors and spelling mistakes, it was garbage. But, I put it out, put it up on Amazon, which was, like, what we did at the time, and the first weekend, like, I told everybody, all my friends, all my family, I sold 50 copies, and I was like, 50 people want to read my book. Um, and over the course of about six months, like, thank God and the angels in the universe, I don't know, it just, one person would tell another, who would tell another, who would tell another, and it just kept selling, and it just kept doing well. And about six months in, I got a call from a publisher who could see the numbers and see that this book was starting to gain traction, and they said, hey, we think this is a book, and we think this is the start of a series. And I was flabbergasted because I, I did not think it was a series. I just was excited to put something out. And I always tell that story. So I ended up signing with a publisher and that sort of kicked off my career. But I always tell that story because it is such an important reminder that even the experts in the field don't always know what they're talking about. And there will be so many people who will tell you no on the way to your goals and your dreams and, your, and you have to decide if you're willing to listen. Like I am where I am today because when people told me no, I didn't listen. I don't think anybody gets to have stewardship of my dreams but me. And the second that you let someone else speak into what is possible, you give away all your power. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up. Reminiscing about the good old days and all that. You know, tracking my roots, where I came from and where I'm going. But like I say, man, always said it. It's not about the destination. It's all about the journey.